latest scuttlebug is that former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is working with Congressman Adam Schiff to keep the corpse of California Senator Dianne Feinstein in her position for as long as possible so that Governor Gavin Newsom doesn't have a chance to make good on his promise to replace DiFi with a black woman, which Schiff, the failed Hollywood scriptwriter, manifestly is not. Joining us now to discuss is radio host Andrea Kay of The Andrea Kay Show. Thanks for being here tonight, Andrea. Thanks for having me. Great. So if this is all true, then this isn't very diverse and tolerant of Schiff or Pelosi, is it? I mean, trying to steal a Senate seat from a disadvantaged <laughs> poor black woman like Congresswoman Barbara Lee, who has absolutely no power pull whatsoever. I mean, I'm being facetious here, but I mean, what do you think of this whole thing? Well, I think, first of all, is this not so Democrats, right? I'm old enough to remember when they ran an ad of showing Paul Ryan shoving a little old lady off a cliff in a wheelchair, and here they are shoving around, moving around a corpse of DiFi uh, to exploit her for power. Uh, you're right, jacking, uh, you know, stabbing Nancy Pelosi's son, a nephew, Gavin Newsom, in the back, by the way, while also stabbing a, a, a African-American woman in the back who would likely be nominated for this position. I mean, it's just so Democrats, right? And um, it, and it's really actually sad, though. It's When you see this woman, it's so pathetic how they are exploiting her. But the Democrats would step on their own grandmother, right, for a little piece of power. And Nancy Pelosi doesn't care. Can't you just hear her, right, saying, oh, you know, she's happy. She Look how happy she is. She didn't even know she hasn't been here for the past three months. And if she starts getting a little cranky, just roll her into the cafeteria and get her a snack, right? Shut up. I got business to do. And do you think it also, the, the, just the symbolism of seeing DiFi right now with, as you were saying, she's been out for months. I think she just recently came back to cast one vote or something. She had sing shingles that then led to other complications. But I mean, just the symbolism of someone who, I mean, when you're in your years like that, don't you want to be with friends and family and enjoying your life and saying, you know, I did a good job here on earth, you know, and I've c concluded my career. Now I'm just with my friends and family, with my kids and grandkids. But instead, no, the hand's just on the scepter of power. I will not let that power go. But I mean, death comes for all of us in the end. Life is about so much more than that. Do you think that's kind of a, a sad encapsulation, perhaps, of where a lot of people, especially those Democrats in power, are right now when it comes to, I will not give this up for anything? Well, absolutely. And it's not even just DiFi, who clearly did not know she wasn't there for months, right? Shame on her family for allowing her to be used this way, right? But I've actually been questioning it about all these octogenarians, these 80-year-olds in high 70s, thinking Nancy Pelosi has been in D.C. How many, 50, 60 years? Should she not? Wouldn't you want to be home with your grandchildren? Why would you want to be so desperate that you, for power that you would be alienated from your own children in, in your later years? Um, but I, but one thing that I find interesting is that DiFi, when she got cranky at that reporter and denied that she hadn't been here, certainly sounded more cogent than John Fetterman. And at least DiFi seems to have the wherewithal to understand to let somebody dress her appropriately, unlike John Fetterman, who showed up and looking like his jammies in a diaper that he wore to bed. What is going on with the Democrat Party that we've got an occupant of the White House? We've got uh, a couple of senators that have no idea where the heck they are. I think it just kind of shows that that's how power is, that power is not even in these electable seats anymore. The power is actually behind them. It's almost the web that puts these people mm -hmm. into office and that they love having, you know, politicians who don't have a secret agenda of their own. They're not afraid of die fire, Fetterman or Biden scheming behind their backs. They know that they're going to sit there, plop down, sign whatever needs to be signed and think, hey, look, I'm, I'm ruling the world when really they're not. They're the puppets to someone else. And I think that's mm -hmm. very scary because whoever those larger players are behind the scene, dark money groups and otherwise you can't exactly vote them in and in and out of power we don't even know who half of them are and so but that's where the real power is look at president trump when he had to deal with the deep state against him just because he was president doesn't mean that his will which was supposed to be borne out by the rest of the executive agency nine times out of ten they all just said no we're not going to do it what are you going to do about it and it shows where the true power is and i think that's terrifying but also do you think it's interesting how with democrats there's no honor among thieves almost and they were talking about how you see die fi with one of nancy pelosi's daughters always kind of in the back and you think oh well lifelong friends and maybe that explains it but no it's it's just we're the ones you know the power behind the throne almost what what do you think of that